God bless you, God bless you, God bless you for tuning in today. Thank you so much for that. Uh, thank you for allowing us the privilege and opportunity to come into your homes, into your spaces, into your lives at this time. We are delighted when it comes to breaking bread, when it comes to uh, teaching the word of the Lord. We are so delighted. I know I am. And so I'm, I'm so glad that you have uh, opened up this video or decided to listen to it. And uh, today we have a delight. We have a a, a, a delighted message for you. We have something great for you. The word of the Lord is always good. It's always good news. And so uh, I'm so glad that you're here. And um, the title of our message today is Sacrifices. And so I was going to title it something different. I was thinking about another title, but I, I, I think this is fitting because this is something that God has uh, called for believers and even non-believers at times to sacrifice. And so that is something that's pleasing to him. When we sacrifice, uh, giving him the glory, when we sacrifice our praises and sacrifice our time, these things are, are pleasing and well-pleasing, God said to him. And so before we get into the word of the Lord, I just want to admonish those who haven't had an opportunity to give. If you've not had an opportunity yet to give, please do so. Uh, sow into good ground. Make sure that your your finances, your time, your gifts, your talents, all those things are sown into good ground because it makes a difference. And this ministry is good ground. And so um, if you want that opportunity to do that, to sow into this ministry, that will be located at the top of the screen. But no, don't ne neglect to do that. Don't neglect to give and sow into good ground when you have that opportunity. And and those who haven't had a chance to subscribe to our new to YouTube channel, please do that at, 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 the time, at this time. If you are new to this broadcast, if you're new to this video, new to uh, the first time you're chiming in here today, please click on the subscribe button and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can keep abreast on all the happenings of God's Harbor, all of our things that we have upcoming for the holidays, all the things we have upcoming for the new year. So you can keep all those things, um, uh, you can keep abreast on all those things. So please uh, do subscribe if you haven't done so. If you have subscribed, thank you so much for doing that. If you haven't have given, thank you so much for doing that. We appreciate everything that you've done as believers and even non-believers. We're so appreciative to God for, for laying it upon your heart to do that. But we're going to get right into the word of the Lord. So the title of today, just wanted to kind of chime in today and just kind of talk to you about sacrifices and how that's well-pleasing to God and how God has set up our blessings according to the sacrifices that, that we give. And so when I was looking at this and I was doing a uh, reading on this, I I looked at the word sacrifices and how we hear it many times, but it's actually given of something for the sake of another. Usually that's something that you give is of value. And so it, it's considered a sacrifice when you when you would do this, but you in a turn would change and did that instead, neglecting the things that you really want to do for the sake of what was important many times. So that thing that was that you wanted to do and that you neglected and put on the back burner at this time and decided that I want to, I will, or I desire to do this instead, even though my mind, my body and everything, my flesh wants to do one thing, my spirit and my, my mind, my being is telling me to do this. And so that's a sacrifice and it takes a certain discipline to sacrifice and so we're gonna go really really quickly to Hebrews 13 and 15 we're gonna start there in fact we're gonna stay there 15 and 16 but we're gonna start at 15 here so the word of the Lord says this in Hebrews chapter 13 verse number 15 by him that is Jesus Christ by him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. So we see that word praise. He says, 
I want you to make sure that you offer sacrifices of praise continually to him. And so what that means is when you're going about your day, when you're going about your life, when you're at work, when you're walking about, when you're teaching your children, when you're living your life, he said con that word mean that word continually means that. And so when we look at the word praise here, we usually look at the word praise as a form of singing because we hear that term praise and worship in the church uh, all the time. We'll hear praise and worship on our Sunday services, on our Wednesday. We have the form of praise and worship and that's wonderful and that is great and that is a, is a correct saying for that. But praise that word praise and worship it usually means when you're singing a praise to, to God, when you're singing and worshiping uh, words of gratitude and thanksgiving to God, that's what that word praise and worship means. But when we are going about our daily lives on a daily basis, we could praise God as well without singing to him which he said, sing unto me a new song. And he said, sing words of praise and worship. He admonishes us to do that. But we can also speak words of praise to him. And so that word praise here says, um, he said, offer the, the sacrifice of praise to God continually. And so praise, he said, the, the, the fruit of our, is the fruit of our lips. So let's go finish this off right quickly so he said offer praise and praise to God continually that is the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name and so praise here he's calling it a fruit it's it's amazing that he calls it a fruit and he says it's the fruit of our lips and so what we know about fruit if anyone knows any one of us have uh, know anything about fruit we know they grow on trees and we know that they are usually uh, cultivated and nourished up and well watered and has to have a certain amount of sunshine. So it has to be in the right soil a lot of times. And what the main thing here is that fruit is grown. And so he associated the praise of our lips with a fruit. And what he what he's saying here is because it's a fruit, it has to be grown. It has to be nourished up. It has to be continually watered. It has to be continually done. And so he's saying here that we should offer up our fruit of praise and worship to him continually on a daily basis in our everyday life. And so it's important that we, we take that time whenever we're thinking about God, whenever we're driving about, whenever we're, we're, um, we would want to do something else or want to, to say something else, we would think to say, thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give you all the praise for everything you've done. And so, for example, with, in my life, whenever I... Whenever God does something for me, it, it could be the smallest minute thing to human or to man. We would look at it, or, or for example, like a parking space. We would look at that and say, oh, that's nothing. Anybody can get a parking space. Anybody can get a great parking space in the front of, of a store or in the front of, uh, um, closer to where the distance of where you're going. But I look at it and I say, God, I thank you for this parking space. I thank you for this opportunity to, to make sure that I'm uh, in a place that's safe or there's places I can, I can be closer to my destination. That little small thing, it's a small thing to, to man, but to me, I look at it as God's favor. And so I give it in return, I give him the fruit of thanksgiving and praise. And it could be this, it could be anything. If it's a financial blessing, the smallest thing, I would say, God, I thank you for this. This is something I didn't have before, and something that you have decided to bless me with. And He said, if you're faithful over a few things, He said, I'll make you rule over many things. So if you're thankful over the small things, I'll give you bigger things to be thankful for. 
And so thank God for the small things, anything that God does in your life. And he said, all good and perfect gifts come from him. So when you get a gift of a parking space, or when you get a gift of a financial blessing, whether it's $5 or $5,000, say, God, I thank you for it. Because he didn't have to do that. He could have given it to someone else. And so if you do that with small things, he'll make you ruler over big things. He'll bless you with bigger doors, open up many, many doors that are, are bigger than what, what you could imagine or even think. So when, uh, when you're offering sacrifices to God, even though you don't feel like it, or even though you don't think it's something that you should be saying thank you for, even though you, think, you don't think it's something that you could, should give him the glory for, you say it anyway. You may, you know, when, when I'm going through in my body, for example, if I have a pain in my body, I say, God, I thank you for it. Because I was taught to give honor and glory and praise to God over 30 years ago in my infant stage of salvation. And because I was taught that, I know now that when I have a pain in my body, when I have an ache, when I have a, a, any kind of symptom, I say, God, I thank you. What am I thanking him for? I'm thanking him for healing my body and I'm thanking him in spite of what I feel like in my body in spite of the pain in spite of the, the cough in spite of the ache I'm saying God I thank you for healing I thank you for it because every thank you is a privilege every uh, um, symptom everything that the enemy tries to throw up on my body and this is how I do this is what I do on a regular basis everything that he tries to attack with my body with I say, God, I thank you because that thank you is giving God the opportunity to heal my body. That thank you is giving God the opportunity to come in and do a miracle in my life. Whether it's financially, whether it's physical, whether it's emotionally, whether it's mentally. Whatever it is you're going through, whatever it is you see a need, wherever you where you wherever you see some something that the enemy is trying to to devise a plan to try and attack you or take you down say god i thank you the bible say resist the enemy and he'll flee from you what that the way you resist the enemy is by giving god, god the glory giving god thanks giving god praise in spite of what's going on in your life Say, God, I thank you because it's an opportunity for God to come in and do his miraculous work in your life. And that is a sacrifice because I don't feel like it. I, it doesn't seem like I should be saying thank you to this. But I'm going to say it anyway because it's a sacrifice now. And so I see this. You say, I see this, but I say that. I see this, but I said, now that's when faith moves in as well. That's when in your faith is increased. That's when your faith is being cultivated. And that's when your faith is being grown. Because I see this, but I say that. Because I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is calling me to give sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving. In spite of how I feel. In spite of what I see. I still give God thanks for what I know God is going to do in my life. And so that's that's one part of the sacrifice. So it's two part sacrifices here. So now let's go to verse number sixteen. So he said, "Given he said, give thanks to him, to his name continually." Now sixteen says this, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. And so when we get all wrapped up sometimes in the praise and thanksgiving to God, we can get all wrapped up in that, and that's great. And that's one sacrifice he wants us to do. But he said, he stopped here and said, I want you to make sure that you don't forget to do good. What does he mean by that? Because it's good to do a sacrifice, to make sacrifices, as he said in, in the first scripture here. That's great. That's good. And that's well pleasing to him. He wants us to do that. But he said, also, don't forget to do good. Do good to who? Do good by your fellow man. So he said, it's all one thing to do good by your praise and worship and thanksgiving and your sacrifice to me. But he said, it's another thing to do good and to, to sacrifice 
to your fellow man. And so there's two parts here. So he said, to, he said, don't forget to communicate and to do good. Communicate here means to share or exchange information, ideas, gifts, talents with others. That's what that means, communicate. Not just verbally communicate with someone, not just verbally call them, that's all good. But he said, don't forget to communicate your time, your talent, your gifts, your finances to your fellow man. In the time that we're in, we can forget because we're going through. Many times we're going through and we we want we we don't have time to help someone else when we're going through is what we think many times. But God is saying, when you're going through, I want, in spite of the fact that you're going through, to sacrifice and say, I'm going to do good for others as well. I'm going to do good for someone else. Because you have to remember that when, what you do for others, God will do for you. That's how God works. What he does for, what you do for others, he'll do for you as, as well. And so he said, don't forget to communicate. Don't forget to do good to others. He said, this is well pleasing to him. I want to tell you a story about uh, a, a gentleman in the Bible from the book of Acts, the 10th chapter. You can read that at your, at your leisure when you have time. But this young man was named Cornelius. He was a leader of a band, of an army. And this man, Cornelius, was a man that was not converted. He was not saved because he didn't know anything about Jesus, but he knew about God. So he'd been taught from his youth about who God was. And this gentleman grew up doing things that were good. As we're talking here, don't forget to do good and to communicate to others. And this man Cornelius, what he did was he would do uh, a give everything he, he could give to those who were in need. And he also didn't forget to pray. And so in the process of him praying to God, because he didn't know Jesus, so he couldn't pray in Jesus' name, he prayed to God and he said, God, he would ask God for whatever his needs were, whatever others' needs were, he would pray for others. And he would also give of his time, give of his finances, give of his gifts, give, give of his talents. He was a very giving man, he had a giving heart. And so if I can imagine here, the Bible says, uh, what he did well I don't have to imagine this, this is what the Bible says the Bible says that what he did was he would give so much that these things would come up to God for a memorial the word of God says so they would go up to God after, every time he would give something uh, to someone it would go up to God if, in my imagination it would go up and stand before God as a memorial the Bible says and we know how memorials are. Memorials are either whether they're statues or something that someone has erected to, 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 to commemorate or remember someone who, who was very important to them. And so these gifts and these talents that this man Cornelius would do would go up and stand before God. And so I can imagine, this is my imagination, if this, these things are going up to heaven, they're standing before God. And everywhere God would move, he would see all of the blessings and all of the gifts and talents that Cornelius would give. And so it reminded God continually of Cornelius. What a blessing to have everything that you do stand before God himself and remind God, hey, look at what my servant has done. Look at what he's done. He's done this. He's given this. He's been blessing to this person and that person. All these things would stand before God and remind God of this individual, Cornelius, to the point this is what happened. And I can imagine if this happened with Cornelius, it happens with us as well. Because God said, it's a sacrifice. He said, now when you do these sacrifices, I will not forget you. I will, it's well pleasing to me. And so this is what he did. So so when, when they stand before God, these these memorials that you of your gifts and the talents and the time that you've given whether to ministry or to people to help someone is standing before God now and everywhere God turns he's seeing O Cornelius he's seeing O Dorothy 
He's seeing you everywhere he's turning because these memorials are set up in heaven because of your giving. Because you, you've given so much of yourself and your time to the people of God that it stands before him now and reminds him. And when God is reminded of something, he does something about it. He, God never is reminded of something and doesn't do anything about it. He said, bring these things in remembrance of me. He said, when you do this, he said, these things, things are brought up as a memorial, it says here. And God, what he did here, he said they were, he was seeing these memorials so much that he sent the angel down to Cornelius. Acts chapter 10 says this. He sent an angel down to Cornelius and said, Cornelius, I'm going to bless you today. And why did he do it? Because he was constantly reminded of Cornelius' giving and his prayers. In spite of the fact he didn't even know Jesus. He only knew of God. And so God said, I got to bless you. He sent an angel down to Cornelius. And he said, Cornelius, this is my instructions to you. I want you to send for Peter. And Peter's going to tell you what you need to do. Now, the end of the story is this. When Peter came, of course, Peter was one that uh, was well endowed with the gifts of God. Well endowed with the, the, the message of God. And so God used Peter to come to Cornelius' house. That Cornelius, and not only Cornelius, but his entire family was blessed because of Peter coming there. The Bible says his entire family. And this is what God wants to do for us. Bless not only us, but our entire family. When you do good, when you communicate to the people of God, God will bless you. Do not fail to do that. I want to give this last testimony about one of my nieces a few months back, a couple months back here, this year. Uh, without... Uh, saying her name, leaving her anonymous. I want to say this. She contacted my husband and I. And she said, I want to be a blessing to you. And she said, I don't say this because you need it or because you asked me for it or because you would even want it. I want to do this because I want to be a blessing to you. She wasn't doing it out of need or necessity or anything uh, in return. What she did was she said, I, it's laid upon my heart to be a blessing to you all. I just want to do it. And I never refuse anyone who wants to be a blessing. I used to do it before, but I had to learn how to receive just as much as I give. And so she contacted us and said, I want to be a blessing. And we said, okay, fine, whatever you want to do. If you God has laid it upon your heart to do it, you go ahead and did it, do it. And so she did it. And she she was a, a, a true blessing to us. It was so appreciative. appreciative. Uh, we were so appreciative of her doing this. And so I, I contacted her back when she did it. And I said, you know what I want to do? And this is what I do with mo everyone who gives to me, who's a blessing to me. I ask God to not allow them to lose the reward. Because the Bible says, if you give a servant a cool drink of water, just a, just a cool drink of water, he said, I promise you, you won't lose your reward. And I take that verse and I say, God, give them the, the reward. Whatever reward it is that you have for them, give it to them a hundredfold. And so when I, when I do that, I expect to hear a testimony of how God blessed them with the reward. And she contacted me one day and she said, I want to tell you this testimony and I forgot to tell you, but I want to tell you right now because I have the opportunity. And she said, when I was a blessing to you and, and uh, your husband, she said, all of a sudden, one day, I got a check out of, out of the blue in the mail. 
I wasn't expecting it. She said, the check came from a company I worked for previously that someone sued the company and there was a lawsuit and as a result of the lawsuit, there was a settlement and I had no idea what I was, what I was getting. I had no idea I was getting this check. And she said, it came in the mail, and I'm reading it, and I see that it's a settlement due to a lawsuit that I had nothing to do with. But because I worked for the company previously, they sent me a portion of that settlement in the mail that I was not expecting. And I said, that is the reward. And she recognized herself. That is the reward that you did not lose, that God said and promised you that you would not lose. When you do not fail to do good, as he said, when you don't fail to do good and to communicate or give what you have to give to bless, be a blessing to the people of God, the Bible says here, verse 16, we'll read it again, but to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, he said that's a sacrifice too, and I'm sure it was with my niece. He said, for this sacrifice, God is well pleased. Not just pleased. He's well pleased, the Bible says. And when God is well pleased with you, he will send you out to places that you would normally not go or not, not be able to go. He will bless you with finances that you normally would not see. He would introduce you to people that you normally would not even meet. God will do that when you fail, do not fail to do good and to communicate to his people. And what I mean by his people, I mean his creation. That means the people who are bound and the people who are free. So do good. Don't fail to communicate. And God will, God will be well pleased with you. He'll send you out as an ambassador, as one that is representative of him, as one who is the highest ranking representative of him, whether he'll send you to teach his word or preach his word, whether he'll send you to be a, 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 a testimony in the mouth, or in the ears of his pe of people. He'll send you out as an ambassador because he can trust you because you sacrifice at the time when you didn't feel like it, it didn't look like you should. It didn't seem like they should be blessed. But you said, I, I, I'm led to do this, even the, in spite of the fact of how, whatever the situation is, I'm sacrificing. I'm blessing the people of God. I'm communicating. I'm doing good in spite of. Until next time, may God bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And I want to pray for those who are, who don't know him. Before I close here, Father, we just thank you. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time and this privilege and opportunity. We thank you, Father, for uh, opening up the ears of your people. We thank you for opening up their hearts. And Father, those who are out there who don't know you, I pray, Father, right now. And I, I ask that you pray this prayer after me. Father, I thank you for uh, forgiving me of my sins. I acknowledge that I am a sinner, but I believe you as the one who came to die for my sins. And your word, of, your word says this, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God has raised you from the dead, that we should be saved. And I confess right now my sin. I renounce it right now, my sin. And I believe you as the one that have saved me from my sin. In Jesus' name. And if you prayed that prayer with me, God has saved you. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Until next time, be blessed.